coaching standpoint, I wish it could have been a tie, uh, just because of our relationship with Brew and I thought both teams <coughs> played with their hearts and left everything out on the floor. And um, unfortunately, I guess um, as far as that goes, that somebody had to come out with a win. But uh, on the flip side, I'm proud of the, the team that we never caved in when uh, there was opportunity. And um, I thought they did an amazing job in the second half of persevering with a lineup that was really non-starters. I mean, we had a couple guys off the bench who gave us huge minutes. And um, we're excited to go to New York City. I think uh, the guys wanted to play for their seniors and I guess get Chaz a, a trip back to his hometown. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, playing. The, the greatest thing is these guys are want to play. And I'll say it again, they, they would go to July if we could. Maybe August, August maybe. Because it's just been fun, it's been fun to be around. And to see the UMass crowd uh, step up for us when we needed in the second half is great. So, heck of a basketball game. Um, and uh, we're happy to be going in my state. We couldn't have gotten off to, to, to a worse start if you tried. You're down 9 nothing before you know. It's 17 points. Early second half, what are you thinking there? And uh, I was I was hoping a few shots would go on to give us some hope. Um, I also thought there was a chance that they could continue to get the ball inside and wear us down in the post. Um, we had a couple of good defensive stops where we they didn't score over us. I thought TV did a better job on Gibbons in the second half. And then we had a little mini run which got us back in the game. And we've been down 17. We've been up 20 at different points during this year. When you play our style, um, there's going to be some waves and some runs. And um, a couple of those three balls start going in, and all of a sudden the, uh, the flow of the game changes a little bit. And fortunately for us, um, it changed for us. Guys, for, for either player, you guys came so close with a comeback at Temple. You came so close with a comeback at against St. Bonaventure. Did, did it feel like you were due to have one breakthrough? I was those two broke through an accident. So, uh, I guess. Uh, we, we, we know we've been a good team. Uh, I think that's been how Bongo is. Day one since October 13th to so now. Never quit, give everything you got. Even, even if you're down by 20 or four minutes ago, give it everything you got. And, uh, I think you've seen that when we played Florida State, we were down by 20 and we kept pressing and pressing, going at them, and uh, it paid off at the end of the year. Jarrell, did you sense they were playing any differently with the, with the four fouls? Uh, I'm pretty sure he probably, probably was. Any play when he played differently when he got four fouls. <laughs> First half, you guys didn't have as much success inside. I mean, you drove guys pretty well, but in the post, you guys didn't have that kind of success. What changed in the second half? Uh, we started shooting floors. Uh, I think some trade balls fell, and they started running off tools. And, uh, they started connecting. Uh, the rest of the day, I think they got tired, and they started getting to that help side. And the lane kind of opened up, and uh, Max got a few dunks, and uh, that was a lot. Chess, I want to ask you the same thing. Did you kind of feel like Maybe you guys warmed down a little late in the game. It seemed like defensively they, they weren't getting the stops they were getting earlier. Uh, yeah, uh, being a point guard, you know, I was doing a lot in the game as it was going on. And uh, I noticed in the first half, you know, the paint was clogged up a lot. And uh, I, noticed, I noticed in the second half that it wasn't. It was more you know, spaced out. And I was doing taking those guys' hand shots. And, uh, you know, it's playing off each other. And uh, we was able to exploit matchups with TV, you know, towards the end. And uh, once again, it came up clutch for us. Did you guys get the feeling that when you finally took the lead, it looked like they looked like a little wind went went out of them at, at, at that point. It looked looked like you, they were, they got tentative and you, you guys were kind of smelled blood. Uh, oh yeah, you know uh, we've been fighting for keeping the lead, uh, fighting with uh, just staying on top of our game and uh, just keep fighting. <coughs> uh, but today, you know, it's just the maturity of us and you know as a brotherhood and guys, and we just want to win. And, uh, we know now, like once we get up, we know exactly what we have to do to keep the lead. So that's what we did tonight. You guys, had a, you guys had a pretty good crowd of you mass people behind you. Was, was, was that kind of give you a lift? Uh, yeah, uh, I think my stepfather was leading the charge. <laughs> yeah, he's very loud, by the way. Who was? Who was? My stepfather. Uh, I think he was over there. I can hear him, and I can, I can see him. I think his shirt started falling off. That's not how We were having some fun with the crowd, too. It was fun to have a good, really a great college basketball atmosphere and have a nice continued <laughs> UMass people. Um, it kind of felt like the Seton Hall game a little bit in that regard again, where you know it's a sold out kind of arena, smaller <clears throat> venue. We had a nice little crew behind the bench. It looked like four or five hundred people had, had made the trip down, and they gave us a nice boost in the second half um, when we were pressing. And you know that our fan base was right in front of the, the pressing area, and I think that helped. 
was that a, was that a frequent thing with you and the fans? You were you were the biggest cheerleader there for a couple for a couple minutes. There. Well, and this really it started kind of at Seton Hall and then also here because the fans are kind of right there and and even back to the cage when we played the first game of the year. You know, it's fun. I mean. <clears throat> Coaching is one of those things you have to enjoy what you're doing and have some fun with it if possible. And um, it was good to see a lot of people that are familiar faces in the crowd. So we were having some fun, and um, I think it helped us. I thought it really helped us, just like our home crowd has helped us at the Mullins this year. How much better was your defense in the second half? And you were really disgusted in the first couple of possessions. And well, our, uh, the technical, I smacked my board and it bounced off the thing. I was trying to pump my team up, you know. <laughs> so it was uh, kind of an accidental technical, um, but it was. And uh, I just thought we played better defense in the second half because we were able to make some bad. We're a much better defensive team when we score the ball. Like if we can put a, f a couple baskets together and then we can set our defense in the full court and then we don't have to guard for 35 seconds. Is, is it too soon for you guys to be able to realize what you were just part of given the, 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 the comeback, what was on the line and so forth? I mean, does that feel pretty much like a, a classic? I'm not sure. I'm too young for classic. <laughs> <laughs> Defensively, <laughs> you, you, they're two big guys just Killed you the first half, and I think they got two points between them. The second half was just something that you change and keep them from getting the ball, or what happened there? Yeah, we forced them out, and um, you know, I thought our press got them a little tentative where they didn't get into their, their sets as well as they did in the first half. Um, in the first half, they ran one same play 25 times and scored off it probably 18 of the 25 times. Um, and I thought our guys adjusted the players, I thought adjusted defensively because it was away from us a little bit, and I thought TV getting on Gibbons helped. And then I also think we're maturing offensively because they've made some they made some changes on the fly because Chaz is becoming a better point guard and really learning the position. Um, he just went at the two man game with him and Terrell, and that was more them guys doing it. I mean, we coach in practice. I get them to play how we need to play, and in the games, they have freedom to play. Like go play, um, and that's hurt us a little bit early in the year, but I think it's paid dividends coming down the stretch. Derek, did you say anything to Bruiser afterward? I mean, I I told him I loved him because, you know, that's what this is about. And, you know, kind of what it is. The guy's been a mentor. Uh, I worked with him every day when I was a point guard in, in college. You know, he's helped me get into college coaching profession. And um, he means a lot to me and my family. Well, uh, I think he got shot uh, seven shots in the second half. Shot seven, over 70%. Um, I mean, I mean, is that just kind of, you just kind of feel it uh, happening? Derek, given the defense they play, how incredible is 70.8% shooting against them in the second half? It's uh, impossible, actually. Um, yeah, we made some tough shots on top of getting some, some good ones. Um, when you play a, a Drexel, you know, a team that's coached by Brew, um, obviously you're going to have to make some tough shots. They, they do a great job of keeping you in front, really pressuring the ball and everybody helping in their big. I mean, that's, that's as big of a team as we've seen um, even in our conference. So. It was, a, it was actually impressive that our guys were able to do that. The players were able to do that. Chaz, are you going to have to spend a fair amount of the next week finding tickets for people? Uh, yeah, my phone will probably blow up now. <laughs> but, uh, just, just want to get back home. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Okay. Chaz, Drexel was considered the best team not to get into the NCAA tournament. Now you guys are two games away from proving that you're the best team that didn't get into the NCAA tournament. How, do you, how would you feel about doing that? Uh, you know, we honored to be playing in this tournament right now. And, uh, you know, I think me and the guys worked hard all those season and uh, it's paying off now. And, uh, you know, we just want to win it all. You know, we came this far, so we might as well you know, try to take it to the last shot. And, and the publicity we're getting um, for our program being on national television three times, going on the road against um, SEC, Big East, and, and what I thought was one of the best teams in the country in Drexel, and uh, being able to do what we've accomplished, I think is really um, really helped the UMass name. So we're, we're fortunate that the NIT uh, picked us and allowed us to play in this great tournament. And, um, you know, we've just started playing, I think, that level of basketball over the last maybe month or three weeks because guys have finally matured. We're learning how to win and close out games, and then we're learning how to win on the road. And um, it's just guys maturing and getting better. And I think we still got a little ways to go with some maturity with different guys on the team.
And the fi you. You finally went in Philly after, did, did you again change the itinerary? What, what was this? The we did all sorts of stuff, so yes. <laughs> we were trying not to go over for Philly for another year, but um, we kept it a little similar, but we were careful of uh, doing some different things. We won't get into all the things that I do, so it's uh, a little bit funny, you know, from you know, having smoothies on the box. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we ain't going to okay. You ready? Anything right, thank else? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.